Welcome to The Couch, a retrospective review of theater here in the Chattanooga area. I'm your host, Gary Lee Posey, and along with a rotating group of my peers and other theater professionals, we will be walking you through some of our experiences attending live theater in the Chattanooga area. You know, when I was in high school and just getting involved in the theater world, I thought everything I saw was amazing. Then I went to college and studied it. Then I went out in the world and experienced it. Then I went to graduate school and cemented my dogma. Then I came back to where it all started and became a producer. All of that made me watching theater very difficult. Even the shows I directed were difficult to watch. I was too critical and too vulnerable. So what's changed? Well, one of my missions with the Ensemble Theater at Chattanooga has always been to make the audience have greater expectations for their theater experiences, to influence us artists to push the envelope on subject matter, to engage your imaginations, to make you want to continue talking about your experience over coffee at the breakfast table the next morning, to be unforgettable. Now, it might be presumptuous of me to think that theater patrons in the Chattanooga area want something more than they are currently experiencing, but I'll take that risk. So with that being said, let's get reviewing. Welcome to episode five of the couch. We are on a different couch tonight. This is the couch in the house where Casey and I live. Um, And uh, it's a little messy, but this is not our mess. But we'll claim it because it's the couch in the house where we live. All right. (laughs) And and speaking of messes, what a great segue into the show we're going to talk about. There was a pretty big mess at one point during the show. I realized that in saying that, it was almost like I was introducing a show that was a mess, and that's not really what I'm saying at all. Uh, quite the contrary. Um, so we're going to talk about uh, today. Revolt. She said, "Revolt again." It's no. a mouthful. That was correct. That was correct. Yeah, yeah. I was oh just my. happy you said it. Correctly. Oh my god! You were like, "No, that was proud." <laughs> okay. That was my proud face. Yeah, that was my proud face too. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what my proud face looks like. So yeah, Revolt. She said, "Revolt again," um, which uh, was. Independently produced? I don't. I think it was in partnership with the um, Women's Studies Department at right. BTC because. Gender Studies. I uh, know, I think it's Women's Studies. Okay, well, Red will figure it out. Because Blake Harris, who directed it, I'm pretty sure was a Women's Studies major. Okay. Um, and so I think he partnered with the Women's Studies Department right. to put on the show. Right. What and building was it in? It's in the Shadok Hall. The Shadok Hall um, building on the UTC campus. There's a a concert auditorium in there that I had never been into as a venue and uh, I think that really is one of the things that stood out for me was how they utilize that space pretty effectively. I mean it doesn't have any wings, it has a room off to the side and a, or it has a door off to the side into another room and then a door that looked like went into a hallway. Yeah, um, that's yeah, the, that's and then and then the on. seats are those old kind of auditorium wooden chairs, which you were like, I don't know if it's going to be comfortable or not. Mm-hmm. Can I sit through a show with no intermission on chairs like this? But you know, uh, not a problem. We made it. <laughs> we're not here to review the chairs. <laughs> oh, <thank laughs> Although it just sounded like I did. Oh, anyway, so yeah, this um, so this theater, this kind of theater, really excites me. Um, uh, I actually wrote down in my notes, um, this is like my theater erotica, mm-hmm. all right? Um, so I just, I really, I really get excited by this kind of creativity, this kind of theatricality. You know, um, we walked in, you walk into the space and uh, on stage were the four actors, three, three ladies and a gentleman, uh, all sitting, chatting amongst <laughs> themselves looking at the audience, waving at the audience, no- noticing the audience. Very there were microphones. Chill. Yeah, very chill, very Bad. informal microphones right in front of them. And, and immediately I started thinking, okay, this is an interesting way to start the show. But you know, it just like, <laughs> I wrote down, it started so clean and simple and then just grew into this like, myriad mess of plastic and prom dresses you know 
And I'm just like, what in the hell did we just experience? Yeah. Yeah? No, I kind of felt something similar. Um, well, I, when we first walked in, I didn't, I, I didn't know anything about the show going into it. Yeah, no, um, I had no idea, yeah. And I thought it was, with them sitting up there with the microphones, I thought it was just going to be a stage reading. And I was like, oh, I kind of don't like stage readings, I just get bored. Mm -hmm. I mean, I see the point of stage readings, I just don't prefer them, and I got a little sad. Yeah. Because I thought it was a stage reading, and then they started moving, and I was like, oh, this is what's <laughs> happening. I never felt comfortable. Uh, and that's what I like about shows like this. Yeah, you never felt comfortable. I was on my toes the entire time. Well, you on were my toes? You were on the edge of your seat, maybe. That's on my toes. Yeah. They kept me on my toes. Kept that's, on my toes. was on my toes. That's ballet. You know what I'm trying to say. That's ballet. Okay. I don't know um, ballet. Well, you know, uh, this is, so this reminds me, um, when I worked in uh, Washington, D.C., I was visiting a friend in Baltimore, and uh, Susan Laurie Parks was doing one of her one-woman shows. And um, she's a spoken word artist. Uh, she's written some plays. Uh, but anyway, and she was doing one of her performances, and I was like, oh God, a one woman show. I am not going to like this. Mm -hmm. uh, riveted. Riveted. And, I, and, and this reminded me of that moment. Because I, I, I mean, again, I had the same thing. Okay, four people, four chairs, four microphones. And I knew a little bit about kind of the nature of the show, being that it was. There was some spoken word uh, to it based on the trailer that they had put out prior to that. So I guess I was expecting that. I was just, I wasn't sure really what, you know, um, but I, I knew that it was going to be different and uh, unique. And I felt like that's the kind of uh, things that, you know, we need to be drawing attention to with this program is those different things that, that might be off the radar. Um, and it's definitely like an ETC show, oh, you know? Yeah. I mean, yeah, if we had found that mm, first. But you know what, in the time, right? <laughs> Blake! Well, knowing, yeah, I've seen several shows that Blake has directed, and just knowing his style going into it, I was like, oh, this is gonna be weird. Yeah. And I'm gonna like it. <laughs> yeah, and I'm gonna like it. I'm gonna enjoy being uncomfortable. Right. Which I did! Yeah, and, and, and again, speaking about Blake, so, um, uh, conceptualizing, uh, performance that's a big thing that directors sometimes do and some scripts lend themselves to heavy conceptualizing some scripts don't uh, Blake likes to choose scripts I think that lend themselves to heavy conceptualizing I do too it is, it's it's a big trap of me of mine so um, uh, and so I think what I, what I loved about this show is you could tell that it was highly conceptualized and you can tell that it was directed with a heavy hand, but you couldn't tell where those, where the story stopped and the directing started. You just knew it. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's a good point. It was very like I, I, I didn't know how much was in the script versus how much, you know, Blake was adding to it, um, you know, to help help us understand the story. I didn't know, you know, I, I couldn't. It was a very nice, smooth, mm -hmm. consistent. Performance uh, straight through that I that I really appreciated and, and, and admired. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. I think I didn't think about that because of how well. It right, right. I feel like it's like lighting. Yeah. People only notice it if it's bad. And you know, speaking of the lighting, the lighting in the show was phenomenal. Yeah. For a room that's not set up for theatrical lighting. It was such a long room. Right. As soon as we walked in, I was like. This is an uncomfortably long room, and just awkwardly skinny and, and you know, it's funny that you do that, because there's an uncomfortably long moment <laughs> in that for anyway. And you'd have to, if you get to understand what hey, I'm talking about, but anyway. Anyways, um, um, so, as soon as, we, as soon as we walked in, I was thinking, if you hear meowing, it's the cat. As opposed to the as dog. As opposed to the dog. <laughs> which you might also hear meowing. Um, we are running. If you, if you hear meowing, it's actually it's Red. It's actually Red. <laughs> <laughs> Red's giving us a really big face. Sorry, we're going. Um, yeah, when we first walked in, I didn't expect much in the way of technical. Sorry, the cat is attacking the cat. Um, I didn't expect much in the way of a technical performance because of the room we were in. But you're right, the lights were great. I loved the sound and the music and 
like that. Yeah, that's like a big surprise. With the projector. At the very end. Yeah, like it looked like she was trapped it was between the performance and the text. It was so good. The way that the projection was uh, hitting the actress mm -hmm. and the back wall while she was speaking and it was typing. It just was like, oh my God, she's trapped in the middle of this performance and, and the text stunning. of the play. That moment, that that that's the that was the money shot for me. Yeah, no, me too. Yeah, I I was like, wow. Was so I mean, this it encapsulated really the whole thing, it the whole so experience. It was so powerful. Yeah. yeah, it was such a powerful moment, and just. Ugh. What would be the one thing that you think that you that like kind of held you back, or, or you know that you could one critique about that you'd have? I I had a little trouble with. The um, recycling scene. Okay. I liked it and I did. I enjoyed it, but there were parts that I felt like were over my head. Mm. Mm -hmm. And I'm fairly good at keeping up with right um, obscure theater. Yeah, but I, there were some parts where I was like, "What? Yeah, I'm gonna piggy, what does that mean? I'm gonna piggyback that comment. <laughs> I felt like I got about forty-five percent of what was being said. I mean, it was being said with such power and such passion that I didn't care about the other. I didn't either. I don't know what she's talking about, but by golly, I want to listen. But I, I, well, I was compelled by the performance. Yeah. But the diction in some places was a little. Uh, it was. Yeah. I guess it wasn't paid attention to, maybe or. I had trouble <laughs> hearing yeah. a couple of the actors. Yeah. Not all the time. Just sometimes when they were a little more internal. Yeah. I just had a, and there were parts that there was like a monologue about, and I don't know if this is purposeful. Um, it was when they started dumping the plastic. Right. This girl is giving a beautiful monologue about a rape or an assault. Right, right. And it's completely just covered up with the All plastic, plastic being dumped yeah. out. Um, and I don't know if that was purposeful to be like, society is covering victims giving their story. Because I could read into that and say, yeah. oh, I gotta get that. But or I didn't like, know if she, if she just was too quiet. Or like, we can't. Um, we can't. We can't, kind of like, we can't see the forest for the trees. We can't see the the devastation for the waste. Oh, yeah. I mean, it could. I mean, be we so could we could read into it all day long. We don't know his motivation, mm -hmm. um, and we don't. That was one part, one part that I was a little like. But it would have been cool. Like, I mean, in a, in a in a spoken word type play like this, I think that you know, I think that a lot of importance has to be given to the text. I agree. You know, and and I feel like that might have been just a little unbalanced. Um, but then again, uh, I don't know. I mean, that's a lot of that's a lot of words and a lot of things, and I could have just missed it. I mean, same. Yeah, you know, I, I, I had. I think I worked early at Starbucks that morning, so <laughs> oh. when I sat down, I was like, okay. You know, let me stay awake because it had been a full long day. So maybe I just missed it because I was tired. I don't know. But I, I would say diction was the one thing for me that kind of held me back a little bit from, from you know, uh, feeling like it was, you know, knock it out of the park. Yeah, thing. I would agree with that. I would have liked to see some, a few slower moments where it was just the text and the theatricality was not as yeah. big and broad because the whole show was grand. Yeah. There were just fewer <coughs> slow moments yeah. where it was about the text. Right. So I would have liked to see a little more yeah. of the roller coaster of calm, not calm, calm, right. not calm. It's Which is interesting just, because you, you, you know, you're, you're doing the, the and in my mind I'm like, I just, I love the fact that you saw like, you saw this go to this. Mm -hmm. Like you mean, like you can look at it, you can objectify the entire production in a picture by being you know, just this small little circle growing to this large, massive mess. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and, and yeah, like so many stories I can concoct about what kind of statement that is being made, whether that's Blake or the playwright or the right. performances, I don't even know. But the, the, the myriad of stories that I can create based just on how I objectify what I what I saw, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it's it's kind of it's the kind of stuff that like really um, keeps you talking at the at the water cooler the next yeah. day or the coffee table the next morning, you know. Oh yeah, it definitely. I like shows that 
I leave and I'm still thinking about it. Right. And a lot of shows don't necessarily do that unless it was not great. <laughs> <laughs> and then right. I'm thinking about that. Right. Um, but this show did keep me thinking and it created a good conversation between you and I because it's so funny because you and I talked about it afterwards but we were both sitting there thinking I bet Casey slash Gary is having a different experience for me because of our genders. Yeah, because I that remember that having that. Entire, that's the, the monologue true. she did with the text over her was very. It was a. It was about female being female yeah. and not having power. And um, I experienced it very different from you because I am a woman, and yeah. we both had the thought. I wonder how Casey or Gary is experiencing this right now, honey. Please. Mommy's working. Um, <laughs> That's true. I remember thinking, and I wonder if that, if from other people who saw that, if you want to comment below um, and let us know um, if, if um, gender, I mean, since gender is a big conversation, and actually gender is a big uh, theme in the show, mm -hmm. um, but if, if, if the gender of an audience member does indeed influence or affect the experience you know and is that like was that like a sometimes thing or is that like an all the times thing and you know i think back to when when etc did keely and do and and i, I don't even know that i was mature enough in my understanding of my experiences i guess to even think that that was a possibility but at the end of that show we were both thinking that about the other one, and I thought that that was really interesting. It's um, maybe it's just the power of the piece. Maybe that's you know what Blake intended is uh, you know in in this age of sort of blending genders or um, neutralizing or erasing or right or well, not erasing but right but neutralizing yeah, exactly. gender neutralizing. I don't know. It just it was an interesting thing. So I, I would love to hear feedback on on what people think about that. Um. Welcome back to the couch episode five. Um, we took a small break because I think I kind of lost my mind and um, made some very interesting comments. Um, and Casey needed some water because she had a coughing fit. <laughs> And um, we're both sick. I hit my, oh my god, stop digressing. <laughs> oh my god. He's not sick because he hit his head on a pie. Okay, let's start record. here. Oh my god. <laughs> welcome, welcome back to a, what was a small break on episode 5 of the couch. We have been reviewing Revolt, she said, Revolt Again, which was produced at Shattuck Hall. We've had lots of great things to say about it. I mean, really, I wrote in my journal about the show that night afterwards, the last thing that I said was bravo. Yeah. Like, for me, that that was an exciting experience. Um, I, I, I wish more than anything that um, we in Chattanooga had a venue that would allow theater like that to be even more um, accessible and uh, experienced on a deeper level. The venue at Shattuck is beautiful and it's amazing. It was created for um, concerts of instrumentalists. It wasn't made for theater and that's not a problem. You know, found theater spaces are really important. Mm -hmm. um, but again, this kind of theater just needs to be so intimate and in your face and I don't think that they were able to achieve that in that space but they really really tried and um, and again for me the experience was magical it, it like I said at the beginning of this it's that that is my my theater erotica that's what that's what really gets me going gets my juices flowing makes me want makes me proud to be a theater artist uh, and uh, I think we should see more stuff like that. And people should should want to see more stuff like that and people should expect that and people should appreciate it. I, I want more theater companies or artists in Chattanooga to do things like that. So badly. Yeah. Because there's a place for your 
um, big Broadway musicals, there's a place for those. <clears throat> Your classic plays. Everybody likes them. Mm -hmm. I like them. But I also like you. This is your erotica. <laughs> That's a weird, real word to say, but. Um, it's what I prefer too in theater is the more out there kind of stuff. And so I wish there was more of a market right now for that kind of theater in mm -hmm. Chattanooga. And I know I've said that until I'm blue in the face because of working with ETC and we obviously like doing a little more risque theater, a little more thought provoking. Um, and it's not always easy to sell. Right. And to see somebody like Blake in Chattanooga that's also doing that, it's mm -hmm. just nice and refreshing and it was very well done. Right. And it made me think and it made me feel things. Yeah, and I love, you know, while we're talking about that, like, I love the fact that, you know, and Blake has produced with the, the Women's or Gender Studies Department before, so, and I love that, I love that idea um, where there are groups out there who are allowing theater artists and helping theater artists promote the art because of the message that it sends mm -hmm. and how it um, aligns with their <laughs> mission statement. Yeah. Um, that again, it reminds me when I was at Ole Miss um, in graduate school. The you know Gay Straight Alliance said, "Hey, we'd like you to produce the play you wrote about Matthew Shepard." And I was like, eh, I don't know. <laughs> "You know, it's really out there. It's kind of angry. It's got a lot of." And they're like, "No, we want you to produce it." And and that was just really interesting. So it had nothing to do with the theater department. It was produced by a separate entity. And I really appreciate that. And you know, ETC, we're partnering with the Chattanooga Autism Center right now, uh, creating um, uh, what we're calling the Spectrum Playhouse, which is going to be, you know, uh, an organization devoted to using theater for um, um, uh, individuals on the spectrum. So. You know, again, it's like the, that the, the Autism Center see, sees the, the value in, in art and how art can be helpful and is stepping up to the plate to help with facilitating this, to help ETC with facilitating that. That's just really exciting for Chattanooga, you know, um, that we have groups that are willing to do that. Oh, so. yeah, I love it. I love partnerships, though. Yeah. I love it when non-theatrical entities partner with theater because theater is about life. I mean, if people weren't living their life, we wouldn't have anything to write about. Right. Um, That's so true. I love it when people who aren't theatrical in nature partner with theater. And I just... Yeah, so kudos to Blake for yeah. for creating that partnership and kudos to the to the um, Gender or Women's Studies Women's Department, studies. Women's Studies Department at UTC. Uh, I hope that you guys partner again and bring us something <laughs> else that's just as exciting as Revolt. She said, revolt again. All right, that's this episode of The Couch. Five in. Uh, the next uh, episode should be uh, not containing me. <laughs> oh, I it's will, me. Yeah. I forgot. Yeah, I will not be in the next episode. Uh, they will be uh, Christy and Casey, uh, who you've met before. We'll be reviewing A Kiss for Cinderella, which is ETC's current production uh, that closes, um, that will have closed by the time that you see this, um, much like everything else we do. But that's okay, that's how it works. Um, anyway, so I don't know what's coming up again for Blake. I guess he'll keep us posted. We'll check on Facebook. Uh, we'll let you know as soon as we hear something. Uh, and then, of course, uh, ETC, we've got Billy Elliot going, we've got the Lion King Jr. at the Theater Center this weekend, we've uh, got... Dearly Beloved? Dearly is Departed. <laughs> dearly Departed at the Ringgold? Is it Beloved. Ringgold? No, I think it's Dalton. East Brainerd. East Brainerd. Yeah, um, Dearly Departed at the, Ring, at the East Brainerd. Uh, sure. Ringgold has something, I think, going Not on. Ringgold. Not Ringgold. Maybe Dalton. Dalton has oh. something going on. There is so much theater happening Just this weekend. Google theater. There is actually a Facebook post by some friends listing all the plays <clears throat> happening this weekend. So um, now I'm just realizing that you're going to see this next oh, week. Never mind. 
And so all of that. Just keep up moved. the theater. And There's a lot of theater. Go, Go see it. it. Go see it. Right. See you next time on the couch. I just want you guys to remember, don't let our compliments inflate your head and don't you dare let our criticisms deflate your heart. Keep creating. And um, we're both sick. I hit my, oh my God, stop digressing. <laughs> oh He's not sick because he hit his head on a pipe. Okay, let's start record. here. Oh my God. I want that on film. <laughs> That's my witch cackle sick laugh. <coughs> welcome, welcome back to uh, what was a small break on episode five of the couch.